Ben. Ilya, now that the Electoral College has voted, does the president acknowledge that Joe Biden is the president-elect? Does he have any plans to invite him here to the White House? Um, the president is still involved in ongoing litigation related to the election. Uh, yesterday's vote was one step in the constitutional process, so I will leave that to him and refer you to the campaign for more on that litigation. What, what is his reaction to uh, Leader McConnell today congratulating Joe Biden and calling him the president to life? I haven't gotten the president's reaction to that yet, but the president, um, again, is pursuing ongoing litigation, would refer you to the campaign for further. And what's the path forward, though, for litigation? If, if the votes have been certified, if the Electoral College has voted, there doesn't seem to be a legal recourse at this point. The campaign would have more specifics for you on legal recourse, but yesterday was one step in the constitutional process leading up to the January 20th date in the Constitution. Biden's cabinet picks. Uh, President Trump had the benefit of the Senate starting hearings and starting the process before he was inaugurated in January uh, of 2017. Um, does the president oppose the Senate taking up uh, Joe Biden's nominees before the inauguration. I think that's a hypothetical, um, and you know he won't get ahead of um, that activity actually happening. But he has taken all statutory requirements um, necessary to in either ensure a smooth transition or a continuation of power. At this point, Kaylee would have better luck convincing people that water isn't wet than she would continuing to pretend that Joe Biden isn't going to be the next president. In this press conference, she starts off by suggesting that Trump is still involved in ongoing litigation related to the election. So that we're clear, there is no more election litigation even close to being legitimate. The Trump campaign and its allies have lost 59 cases in the courts, including twice at the Supreme Court, where Donald Trump himself appointed three of the justices. They've also been shot down by Trump appointed judges in Wisconsin, in Georgia, in the Third Circuit Court, in the Eleventh Circuit Court. All of that is to say, when it comes to the courts, no amount of frivolous litigation is ever going to manifest this alternate reality that Trump and his mouthpieces are desperate for. Kelly then goes on to say that yesterday's vote is just one step in the constitutional process, referring to the minor little procedural step of, you know, the Electoral College quite literally voting for the next president of the United States. Yeah, hardly even a newsworthy event other than the fact that it is quite literally how the president is chosen. Joe Biden will have just been inaugurated on January 20th, and Kayleigh McEnany will still be suggesting that the inauguration is nothing more than a procedural step and that Trump is still exploring his many options. Kayleigh was even asked if Trump would oppose the Senate taking up Biden's nominations, and still she deflected. To be clear, regardless of Trump's despotic fever dreams, Joe Biden is going to be the next president. So holding up his cabinet nominations does nothing but prevent the next administration from being ready to serve the American people. It doesn't hurt Joe Biden, his cabinet will be confirmed eventually, but getting a head start on confirmation hearings ensures that they're ready to go on January 20th, instead of only starting the confirmation process after that date. And having a health and human services secretary, having an education secretary, having a defense secretary is necessary to ensure that Americans are safe. Then again, when you weigh protecting Americans with Trump's ego, guess which one he's going to choose. On that same note, the 9-11 Commission report found that, quote, the new George W. Bush administration did not have its deputy cabinet officers in place until the spring of 2001, and the critical sub-cabinet officials were not confirmed until the summer, if then. In other words, the new administration, like others before it, did not have its team on the job until at least six months after it took office. And that left the United States vulnerable to the worst attack in U.S. history. In other words, Trump and his mouthpieces, knowing the danger of not moving quickly to allow departments to be prepared and set up prior to a new administration taking over, would still rather commit to this bit than keep Americans safe. They're prioritizing performance art over our lives. And by the way, just a side note, in order to wiggle out of answering any more questions about a topic that she's clearly in over her head on, she ducks any more questions by saying that she'll refer any further questions to the campaign where Kaylee herself is an advisor. In other words, Kaylee would have to refer these questions to Kaylee. Got it. But Kaylee perpetuating disinformation is no secret, and she was quite literally called out for it during this press conference. Really interesting turn of events, uh, and good for those who covered what was a story all along and not Russia disinformation. Kaylee, isn't it hypocritical for you to accuse others of disinformation when you spread it every day? But the disinformation isn't a bug, it's a feature. It is the point. 
Kaylee clearly knows that there's no path to victory for Trump, and yet instead of having a shred of integrity, she continues to run cover for someone whose only goal now is to undermine faith in our electoral system. That's it. She knows Trump won't win, so at this point, it's just a scorched earth policy to coddle his ego. All she's doing is actively destroying our democracy on a daily basis by convincing Trump supporters that he won when he lost. That is, by definition, a disinformation campaign, and Kaylee's ensuring that her only legacy will have been lying to the American people on behalf of the wannabe king that she works for. If you like this video, please check out my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, where I take a deep dive into the week's most important stories and interview major players in politics, including Kamala Harris, Katie Porter, Adam Schiff, Nancy Pelosi, Eric Swalwell, Mary Trump, Al Franken, Cory Booker, and many, many more. Again, that's No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, available anywhere you listen to podcasts.